Hello and a very warm welcome to this morning's webinar um, or this afternoon's webinar or wherever you are in the world joining us for the awards today. Laura. Thank you. Um, we're pleased to kick off formally uh, this series of webinars for the 2025 awards season. We're starting off by sharing with you today some, some very exciting news that we have about a, a new entry interface that we're using for the creation and the submission of entries for all of the entrants who are participating in the 2025 awards. So I'm Matt Cryer, I am Head of Awards here at Rossburn, and it's my pleasure today to uh, talk you through this new system that we've been busy implementing over the closed season. So we'll take through step by step to show you what the system looks like, talk about some of the benefits and then talk about some of the, you know, the wider useful effects of having this new system in place. Uh, at the end, we'll also be taking a kind of an informal Q&A. So you've got the opportunity to raise Q&As as uh, questions occur to you uh, throughout the session. Um, we'll then get towards the end of the session and we'll cover what we can from those sessions, uh, those questions within the session today. And if you have a question that isn't responded to, we'll have a full, a full list of that and we'll make sure that we go back to you uh, on a one to one basis as well. So let's uh, start off really by giving you a reminder of who we are as ROSPA uh, and what the awards are. So ROSPA have been around for over 100 years. We're, we're delighted to have, uh, have the patronage of um, Queen Elizabeth and then it's recently been renewed by King Charles. Um, we are an organisation that you obviously will be familiar with us in a workplace context, but ROSPA also uh, take on health and safety advice in all areas of life. So we look at road safety, home safety, leisure safety, to name but a few. So we're really interested in a holistic approach to keeping workers safe in the workplace and also outside of the workplace with our families as well. The ROSPA Awards have therefore been a really important part of that journey because they have this wonderful uh, way that we can we can get in contact with the workforce and then in turn we can help influence in those other areas of life as well. So the awards themselves uh, were established way back in 1956 when we first gave out the Sir George Earl Trophy. Uh, and that trophy continues to be part of the scheme today. In, uh, in the 2025 award season, which we're, we've now opened up, we're going to be in our 69th year. And we're really excited over that time to have grown from a, a very kind of uh, a UK based scheme and whilst the UK is still our, very much our core market and, and one of our, our main focuses, we've grown internationally as well. Uh, and in recent years, as you can see from the graphic here, we've grown to having participation from 60 different countries at the last count in 2024. As we move forward, um, we, we've been looking to implement a scheme and a system that works really well wherever we are in the world. Um, and that's always been part of our strategy for delivering change to support the great growth that the award has seen with some 2000 entrants uh, taking part in the 2024 season. So what we're doing moving into 2025 is to implement a new award entry site interface. So our aim is that this new interface will be intuitive and easy to use. But at the same time, we're not making any drastic changes to our question sets. So whilst we have a new interface, we're also returning to the scheme in 2025 with familiarity around the question set that we are all used to preparing for. Um, so though there's not going to be any great um, great change to any of the preparation that you may have yourself already been doing over the off season. So a little bit really about the, the award story. So some of you who've been involved in the award for a number of years will remember that uh, we had a very kind of manual paper based process. Some of you may fondly or maybe less fondly remember putting together lots of lever arch files and lots of binders and sending them in with your evidence, which we would then distribute around our, our network of assessors and, and then ultimately grade and bring back to you a result. So we moved on from that in around 2010 to a, a USB based system and then latterly to, to the website that you'll be familiar with for uh, from the recent years of the ROSPA Awards. 
So we we felt that um, with that site having been in place for for a good while now, it was time to to take the next step in the evolution of the awards. So what we've got on screen here is the the new login screen that you'll be greeted with when you receive your logins for the 2025 awards season. So we really hope that you find this new system to be. Um, uh, a simple to use system uh, and easy to navigate system as well. So when you receive your login for the first time, your login will be the, basically your email address this year um, and the email address that you've used to register for, for the awards that you are participating in in 2025. So just a reminder really, that the first step in the process for those of you who may be new to the awards this year is to register online at rosper.com forward slash awards. Uh, we will then proceed um, following the registration to process that and send out your logins. When you use the system for the first time this year, you'll have the benefit of setting your own password credentials from scratch from the first time you use it. And the system will talk you through uh, exactly how to do that and the different steps that are involved. Once you've done that as well, you then have uh, kind of full control over the, those login credentials uh, and can change them as required. When you first log into the system, you'll be greeted by a help and advice page, which gives some useful top level information about the award scheme and the key dates that we have in place, as well as the general process that will be followed as part of participation and entry. So this includes guidance on your deadline dates and it includes guidance on what and when to make your submission. So as usual, um, the preparation time kind of starts from as soon as you receive your login, but we will then formally start taking those completed uh, those completed submissions uh, from the new year and, and not before the new year. And we're working up towards an entry deadline of the 22nd of January for the first cycle of the awards this year. So next, when you log in, you will be greeted with a My Entries page. Now, this My Entries page will show you all of the different entries that you have registered for and are associated with your account for the coming awards season. So in the example here, we've got the Achievements Award category. Uh, you can click on the PDF link at the right hand side at any time to get a sample list of the questions as you log in for the first time if you want to circulate that around your team for for preparation and getting started uh, but then for an individual entry you simply click on the entry name and then that will take you into the entry itself where you can then start to edit it When you then arrive in the entry, you'll be greeted by the main navigation screen uh, with a start here tab and the start here tab will confirm to you all the details that have been processed for your registration. Uh, it will confirm the category that you're currently looking at and the name of the entry that you have put forward. So that again will be either specific to your organisation as a whole or as in other years, you can still enter on a site by site basis. You can then click through and work through each of these tabs at your own pace. Uh, each of them will have various different questions and criteria to be answered. Um, and as you work through, you can save each of those sections as you've been used to in previous years, and you can come out and you can come back to them at your leisure. You'll also find that when you're logged into each category, the deadline reminder appears in the top right hand corner to show you a reminder of when the submission is due. So one of the other things we've integrated into the tabs this year, um, rather than being a little bit less obviously in the bottom right hand corner of the screen is the guidance notes. So each category will have its own specific set of guidance notes. So this gives you a reminder of all the criteria that you need to follow as you complete your entry. We really encourage you as a first step, particularly if you're new and even if you're returning to just take a look through those guidance notes first of all. So they talk to you lots about in particular how to prepare and provide your evidence documentation. Now that evidence is really crucial to gaining a good mark in the Rossborough Award Scheme. Um, it talks to you about the different 
technical criteria regarding your your uh, evidence so the kind of file sizes you can use and the different file types that our assessors are able to accept it also talks to you about um, how to present that evidence and what types of evidence to use so crucially we're looking at all those usual evidence types to do with things like policy planning and procedure uh, and also the worked evidence examples so those worked evidence examples again being documents that show all of your planning actually taking place during the correct qualification year so as a reminder as with all of the um, uh, different seasons the qualification year is the full calendar year uh, that precedes the awards year so going into the 2025 season the 2024 calendar year is the primary year that all your evidence policies examples and work documentation should reference now that's how our assessors know that you are complying with your systems and that they have been delivered as described during the period that we're assessing so that's really important um, and that worked evidence is one of the you know the strongest differentiators between those um between the different grades, say so between those who who are getting a, a, a gold and a silver, for example. So as you click through each of these sections, um, you'll complete them, them one by one. When you then finally get to the stage where you're you're happy with things and you're you're about to submit your, your submission, um, you will be prompted if there are any sections that require completion. So if the system is now really kind of helpful and dynamic in telling you where you may have missed a bit of mandatory information, for example, uh, or where there is uh, a word count that uh, is uh, it's where you've not provided enough words in fact so the, the word count helps us um, in terms of making sure that you are you're approaching the questions appropriately we've also given enhanced inline uh, evidence as well uh, enhanced inline description of all the different sections that you need to complete so here's a here's a great example of that uh, in section one here the organization profile screen you can see here that for each element that you're required to give a written response to, you will have a response box where you can put your text in and you can format your text as well. Uh, it also will clearly mention on each box what the word count for that particular box is. Uh, and then with all questions that you come th across throughout the entry, as well as the guidance notes on that tab, there are also inline guidance notes as well. So you'll find to the right of each section that you need to complete, there will be notes and bullet points that remind you what the criteria is for that particular element of your entry. We've also got the benefit of some uh, enhanced file handling this year. So the, the new interface supports dragging and dropping of your evidence files. Uh, for each uh, evidence file that you have as well, it will have its own specific upload uh, section. And that means that we are enforcing this year the eight items uh, per section limit within the system itself. So um, rather than giving the guidance that that document, if it was exceeded, wouldn't be, be looked at by our assessors, we, we now have the uh, kind of a hard limit on the eight items of evidence per each of the main key performance questions. And for certain other sections where there is a differing limit, it will be clearly shown on screen. So one example of that is the organisation profile where there is a limit of five different items. For that organisation profile, we've always encouraged people to share photographs and the like because it's really helpful to um, to give some context about your entry. As you move forward, um, something we've often had lots of questions on by those who have completed entries and submissions is how to get a bit of a clearer um, acknowledgement of the fact that all their hard work has successfully made it over to our assessment team. So now when you complete your entry, you'll get an on-screen prompt uh, and you will also get a email sent in confirmation as a receipt that your, your entry has been finally submitted to our team. And then once that has occurred, you will also be able to log back into your entry and you'll see listed still will be uh, all the entries that you are you are completing and those that you have then submitted will have their status changed to submitted. One other useful feature at this point is that 
previously we have had the need for an entry to be PDF'd or taken as a record prior to hitting that submit button. So we've changed that functionality now. So you can take a copy of your entry and all your progress so far in it at any point via clicking on the PDF button. That will always reflect um, generating a PDF that shows the current state of your entry. So that's also helpful, I guess, for, for circulating and reviewing around your team uh, if you would like to do that before you submit. So there are some great benefits in terms of reviewing prior to submission. Um, the great thing about the new system as well is that, and this is something we've not been able to kind of offer to before in previous rounds, is that once you have submitted, you can go back into your entry. It will still stay there in a read-only state as well. So you will have that for reference in future years. So whilst we can't um, show your reference, your entry from last year, when you progress to the 2026 season, uh, your 2025 entry will remain as an archived entry for you to reference. And we hope that is something that you will find useful for um, reflection and review when you come to move forward and start to work on future entries. When you generate that PDF as well, it comes off in a really useful format. Um, it will kind of show all of the sections of your entry and it will show all of the different elements and all of the different files, in fact, uh, with a link through to those files. So you can check which files you've used when you come to to make an entry in the following year. So that brings us on nicely, I think, to um, the importance of uh, using the ROSPA Awards as a framework for, for reflective learning. So we really hope that, I think particularly this, this archive access to your entry and being able to view it year on year for uh, additional inspiration and also as a bit of a catalyst for making sure that you are continuously improving and continuously moving forward. We really hope that this will be a valuable tool to, to provide an easier access to your, your entry and the hard work that you've carried out in previous years so you can really build on that. Um, so we, we really do think that the, the awards are a great tool for reflection. And that's why we included the, the reflective learning question first in 2023 and again in 2024. Uh, you'll see that again presented this year as you go in. So we'd encourage you to be thinking about um, about reflection across the whole awards piece as you write it and as you complete it. Um, and thinking about, you know, celebrating what's gone well in the last year uh, and thinking about what else you can be doing to, to evidence in your future entries year on year. And I think we think it is a really important tool because the process of joining together and reflecting is a great way to mature as a team or as an organisation. And it's a great way to spread a positive culture throughout the organisation as well. So thinking particularly as well of those sites that uh, those entrants who are entering multiple sites, uh, it's a great tool for thinking how your different sites and different locations are making progress together. Um, also, it's a great opportunity for benchmarking between different sites that are entered into the scheme as well. Um, so by seeing the results that we're gaining each year and the feedback that those of you who specify feedback for one of your categories gain as well, um, it's an opportunity to really to really move forward. And I think remembering, you know, where you've come from with that progress as well. And I think the final step of the awards is really, as well as putting all this hard work into both the entry and also all the things we're doing at site level that enable us to, to get to where we do in the scheme, is uh, that final step of celebrating all together. Uh, this year, we're continuing to, to offer those celebration events uh, as a way of doing that and as a way of rewarding those, uh, those team members who've been instrumental. Um, so we'll we'll be having our, our London ceremony for those who are successful uh, in the scheme this year on the 13th of May uh, at the Grove House Hotel and a further ceremony later on in the year in Dubai. So another reminder as part of the process as you're working through this new entry system and as you are putting things together, um, it's a real reminder that all that work is really of value to you for your own personal development as well so um so we had the uh, the award scheme independently verified 
uh, for its reflective entry process last year by uh, the CPD certification service. So we'd really encourage you to make sure, particularly those of you who are members of uh, professional bodies uh, and have CPD uh, scheme um, and process as part of that to make sure that the time that you are putting into the awards uh, is really kind of uh, giving benefit to that process for you as well that you're you're recording the time that you're spent reflecting with your team you're uh, recording kind of new skills that you might be learning as part of the process um, and that you would also make yeah that you make sure that you log that and get as much benefit out of it as you can so that's the main um, the main real overview in terms of what we have changed with the interface this year. Um, we feel that it's been a really um, you know it's been a really interesting process for us as we've worked through getting these changes. Obviously, we've been familiar with the the previous uh, entry portal for a good number of years now, but we feel that we've got a great number of benefits in terms of the new scheme and a great number of uh, ways that. This will help us move forward as well with the scheme and continue to evolve and continue to be to be dynamic. So we are have an opportunity now for some questions to close out the webinar with. So I'm going to pause for a moment while we just take some of those uh, questions um, and then we will respond to as many of those as we can one by one. So one question I've, I've, I've received uh, in terms of uh, the system usage and um, so we, we had a previous um, a previous uh, function in the old system that allowed um, that well, well, whereby the system would, would time out after a certain amount of time as, as a security feature. Uh, an unfortunate kind of issue with that was that sometimes that would mean that if you were timed out and you'd been away that you might possibly lose some changes. Um, I can confirm that with the uh, with the new the new process um, there there is no longer the likelihood that that will happen in terms of of loss of work um, the we also don't get the what could be a slightly intrusive reminder in, in the bottom corner popping up. Um, I'll just give you a quick reminder as well. Sorry, I don't think I, I very clearly instructed in terms of exactly where uh, where those Q&As are posted. But if you open and click on the Q&A bubble uh, at the top of the screen, it will open a sidebar for you and then you should be able to post your questions on the side tab there as you go through. Uh, a question in terms of user logins. So um, user logins, um, I'll just mention now. So the user login uh, would email out uh, a, a password and a, a, a login for, for each individual uh, user last year. So this year, your user account um, will be tied to the email address that you, you make the registration with. And once you've used the system for the first time, that account will then stay with you uh, as you progress through uh, the award seasons in future years. So unlike previous years where you've had a brand new one generated each uh, and every year, um, that will stay with you each year. But it can be, be reassigned to, to different users, of course. And um, as people as people maybe move around organizations and contacts need to be changed. OK, so um, I had a question coming in then in terms of the, the deadlines. So what's the difference between entry cycle one and cycle two? So entry cycle one um, is what we class as the first competitive uh, awards deadline. So entry cycle one has an entry deadline of January 22nd. So that deadline uh, uh, allows entry to all of the open categories that we have each year. So that includes all of the competitive awards. That includes the, the industry sector awards, which is obviously one of our most popular categories. Uh, it allows entry to our uh, specialist awards, such as the Health at Work Award and the Dillman Environmental Award, as well as all of our other 
categories that are aimed at individuals. So, so that might include the, the Inspiration Awards and the Inspiring Women in Safety Award. We have always traditionally then offered a second cycle uh, of entry during the year. So for example, if your organisation uh, doesn't quite fit with, uh, with the deadlines that we that we use for the first cycle, or if your organisation uh, wants to enter it later on in the year. The only restriction with that is we have a smaller number of categories that are open, uh, and it has a later um, a later registration deadline, but also a later submission deadline as well. So uh, the entry deadline for cycle two is the 18th. But that 18th of July, uh, sorry, the 18th of June entry cycle two, but that is just for achievement awards and fleet safety awards without any competitive elements. Uh, and they are awards that if you're successful are sent out by post. So I'm going to work through a few of these as well. Thanks for the questions that are coming in. This is great. Um, I've got a com comment here with the submission uploads. Previously, our company uploaded each document with evidence name, such as Appendix 1.2. And this was uh, referenced. Oh, well, I'm missing the end of that comment. But a question in terms of the format um, of the, um, oh no, sorry, does the evidence name as part of that still count towards the word count? So we, we've we kind of simplified this this year. So um, for each of the files, it has its own file upload block. So for example, uh, on question two, you will have file 2.1, file 2.3, file 2.4, and so on. And all you need to reference in your text responses this year is the name of the file holder that you've placed that document in. So whilst you do still need to reference the name um, of the, the file holder, so file 2.1, for example, within your text response, um, it is essentially just using the space of one word if you've got brackets either side of that and no spaces. So that means that you are in, in a way gaining a bit of word count by, by a shorter file name process. Um, let's work through some more of these questions. I'm both um, presenting and sharing today, so just bear with me while I, while I look through these. Um, so how would you respond to the reflective learning section if this is your first entry? So the reflective learning um, section isn't just necessarily reflecting on how you have performed in the awards on one year versus a different previous year. So it's actually asking you to talk about a particular kind of standout light bulb or learning moment that has affected the way you've managed your, your health and safety during the qualification year. So it's a process of thinking to get thinking together with your team about um you know what what that particular standout thing was that has had some sort of significant change for you uh, and then talking through the process of how you've learned from that and how you've implemented that so you don't need to be a previous entrant to uh, to respond to that um we've got some other questions here then so um so we uh, can you apply for all additional awards or just one? So you can apply for if you want one of the main categories on its own. So such as an achievements award or an industry sector award, you can specify as many of the additional categories uh, as possible uh, if you so want to do. And um, we'd encourage you to, to rationalize that though and think about those that you are really intending on completing. Uh, completing entries for, um, but you can you can enter just one additional category, for example, say a fleet award or an inspiration award, or you can enter for multiple different categories. Um, so, so in terms of uh, copies of previous submissions, you're you're able to get. Um, a copy of your submission if you PDF'd it uh, previously. Um, if you hadn't previously taken a copy of your submission, we'd we'd encourage you maybe to look back at your notes in terms of the files and the evidence particularly that you've pulled together. Uh, but we can't unfortunately provide a, a copy of a previous submission going into this round. But we do hope that functionality that's built in will now mean that that's going to be a self-service thing that you can do in future in future entries. And um, we've got a question here about um, kind of technical requirements for those who are maybe entering from different platforms. So struggled a few times when experiencing technical difficulties. 
um, on the on the platform uh, and using uh, using it on the phone. So I think this new this new platform is really kind of optimized uh, to be kind of a cross platform a cross platform device. Um, so it will work well on laptops. It will work well on iPads uh, as well and and phones as well. So it's it's optimized to scale for all those different uh, different issues. In terms of uh, kind of getting advice and support, there is kind of some some built in help and support documentation um, as well to help you through that. Um, so someone here has said, I just want to check that um, you just said you only need to use 2024 information and documentation for the submission. So yes, to clarify on that then, so um, all of the information that you provide and the documentation you provide for the 2025 season, season should be taken from 2024. So again, that helps us to see that, that what you're doing is kind of current and that what you're doing is kind of complying with your own plans and your procedures that you've put in place. Um, we we accept that occasionally there may be certain things that you have uh, not got a current year example for. So so we know that this can sometimes be a challenge for organisations that have got a really good ac accident record in terms of completing the question, for example, on um, accident investigation and, and showing an example of a recent investigation that's taken place. Um, so one thing we'd maybe encourage on that is that you uh, you make sure that you consider things such as you know near miss reporting and the like as well. Um, think about different ways you can provide that documentation. But also, if there is you know there's a good reason why you can't provide a current year document, um, please do mention that in the text and then explain that to to the assessor because they will they will kind of value that advice. Uh, in in clarification, rather than just thinking that it's something that's not been you know recently implemented or that it's been overlooked. So, someone who's got a question that they're entering uh, for the first time this year, you have two different facilities and you're looking to submit them together. So, we we really leave it up to you as an entrant in terms of how you want to define the scope of your entry. So, um, I think as I mentioned at the start, you can enter as an individual site, um, you can enter as a division, you can enter as a region, or you can enter as a whole organisation. So, in terms of how how you you process that entry process um, you can you can group those two facilities together provided that you you kind of name the scope of your entry appropriately what i would suggest though is kind of going forward there are benefits to entering them separately in terms of uh, benchmarking and, and so on that we discussed in the reflection section so so there, there are different ways you can go about it. It's entirely up to you, really. But there are there are benefits to keeping them separate. Um, or if you want to try in your first year to, to, to join them together, that's that's up to you. Um, another question here. So someone who started a new HSE role and would have to use information that came before their time and involvement. I think like I like I mentioned to to the previous question, uh, we really encourage you to have you know, as as recent uh, as possible information, because um, it's always um, viewed more positively by the assessors. Um, so if you have documentation that you don't have access to, um, I'd, I would make a note as to as to why why that is. Um, but also kind of talking about what you're doing as well in terms of rectifying that would be really helpful. Uh, I've got a question. Is there any special requirement for those who achieved ROSPA awards last year, uh, 2023, or remain the same process? So, yes. So if you received a, a ROSPA award uh, in 2023, um, please contact one of our, our team direct if you're looking to enter in 2025 uh, and maintain an awards history, because we can case by case look at uh, ways of making an additional submission for any missed years. So if you last entered in 2023 and are now entering in, in 2025, we can look at putting together a retrospective entry for 2024. Uh, so please do ask one of our one of our team direct about that and we can we can reach out to you. Uh, does the application for an achievement award cover the additional awards or will you need to do an additional application? So this has been been simplified this year. So last year you 
you would have made a registration for the Achievements Award or the Sector Award, for example, uh, and then you would have received a follow on email clarifying if there were any additional categories that you wanted to register for. Uh, this year that um, it's all done in the same the same process within our web shop. So it's a bit more streamlined and a bit more straightforward. So we would uh, we would ask you to tick any of those additional categories that you want to make uh, as selections. And just a reminder, really, if you're entering for the sector award or the achievement award or the fleet award as your main purchased award category, um, those other options that you will see below are all free to enter additional categories that can add value to to your registration for this 2025 season. So we've got a quest, uh, question here saying um, in terms of the fact that the questions have been similar for a number of years, um, is it expected that some responses will be previous to, to previous years? Um, I think what we'd encourage you again is uh, if you find that your the response that you would be able to give for a particular question is too similar to, to something that you've maybe archived from a previous year and are referencing, I'd really kind of, you know, use that as a catalyst to think about um, are we being a bit too static in this area? Is there anything more we could be doing that we can be we could be taking forward? Um, that said, there are some processes that just work well and they're, they're, they're the same for a reason. Um, the the assessor will be looking at your 2025 submission in isolation so they won't actually be assessing or comparing with your 2024 submission but what we do ask is that uh, if you are reusing some information that is the same as it likely would have been in a previous year that you do reflect on it you do think through uh, whether it is still appropriate whether any changes have occurred uh, and that it's still kind of fit for purpose essentially um, so I hope that answers answers your question on that. Um, I've got a question here saying, do I need to register even though I did that last year? So you do need to register for for participation in the scheme afresh each time, uh, each each consecutive year. So we are we have been and we are still continuing to send out reminders for for participation this year uh, for those of you who took part in the scheme last year. So we really hope that you'll be back uh, for the 2025 season. Uh, if um, if you've not received that, do by all means check your your junk mail as well in case it's gone in there. But you can also go on manually and head straight to rosperawards.com, uh, rosper.com forward slash awards, apologies, uh, and, and manually register there uh, as soon as you're ready to get involved. And uh, just a reminder, really, that we, as always, we have an early bird discount rate that's currently in place, uh, and that rate will be in place until the 6th of November. So, and that is really. Um, you know that's there whether you want to participate in cycle one or whether you're someone who's traditionally entered later on in the year you can still benefit from from that early bird discount uh, even if you maybe have an intention to to enter in cycle two uh, let's have a look through a couple more um Uh, I've got a question here on I'll be submitting in June 2025, so cycle two, but can I use documents and initiatives that I'm doing in, in quarter one 2025? Um, so this is kind of a, a common uh, a common thing that we get pointed out by the, the judges uh, and the assessors. So it is still the case that even if you enter in that second cycle, um, that we are still looking at the 2024 calendar year as the qualification period. So that information for you would then be applicable to a 2026 season entry. Um, so please be careful around that when you put that documentation together. What I would say is though, obviously there's things that you're preparing now that are going towards those initiatives that you're planning to deliver. So they might be things that could be covered uh, in your reflective practice question in terms of things that you're, you know, that you're doing now to plan for plan for the future. So those of you who have a couple of questions about logins, so those of you who have always already uh, made a registration online, um, we are processing our way through those. We always have a, a, a huge demand at the start of the season when we first open. Um, we are processing those uh, in line with, with the, the terms for, for, for the registration and we'll be getting those to you um, very shortly.
So we have a, a question as well here on the um, a couple of new categories that we have this year uh, the, uh, in relation to the Achievement Award. So we have the Achievement Award Chaz Foundation and the Achievement Award Chaz Hire. Those are two uh, new entry categories that we've been really pleased to be able to offer this year uh, in partnership with Very Force Chaz for the very first time. So they take on the fact that there's certain information that has been um, verified and and seen and documentation that's been checked as part of the chas membership process so there are two different options that come with those categories uh, the foundation which has a higher uh, a higher level uh, limitation of a bronze award is a, a stripped back um, version of the achievement award submission that has a couple of key criteria in terms of uh, questions that are asked on the key performance questions, so the safety management system questions. Uh, there's still all the information there to complete on your accident history, uh, on your enforcement history and the other data sections. Um, whereas the CHAS hire looks at the full question set, but there are certain areas of documentation that are struck out on the on the evidence list of requirements because we know they are things that have already been seen in the CHAS uh, membership verification process. Um, so a couple of final questions that we'll, we'll, we'll close in. We'll close a aim for a, for a quarter to finish to allow you to, to get ready for your lunch and meetings that you've got following on for this. Um, if you register an achievement award and for a sector award, is that two different sets of questions to complete? So uh, first up, I'll, I'll clear up on this really, is that you would only be looking to um, enter for one of those two categories. So the, the sector award is a competitive category. Uh, when you enter that category, it gives you the opportunity to be looked at for a best in class honor uh, with all others who participate in your industry sector. So that could be manufacturing, for example. If you aren't successful in achieving one of the top level awards in that category, it still goes on to be assessed for an achievement award level grade. So that includes a gold, silver, bronze and merit level grade. Uh, so you wouldn't you wouldn't be in a position where you would want to uh, register for both of those categories for the same site in the same year. It may be, however, if you're a multi-site entrant that you would want to put forward a particularly high performing site for the sector award uh, and put other sites in for the achievement award, but there isn't a situation where you would be putting two different, uh, uh, both those categories in for the same entry. Um, is there a full list of questions outside of the portal to start preparing, or is it best to get the blank PDF? So you can get the blank PDF when you log in, as you mentioned. Um, the, the main questions you can you can find by looking at the, the product page for each of the categories. Uh, they don't include the full question set, but they give you the main safety management questions. Uh, they're also helpful if you're thinking of entering for the very first time. Uh, then there's a question, just one more we'll cover here, um, that says, I may not complete all 19 sections in the system at a time, and that's very understandable, we wouldn't expect you to. Um, is it possible to fill the details partially and save them to continue the next day? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the system is very much set up for you to go into it, to work on things, to come out. We know that you're doing this alongside your day job uh, and alongside other things that you're working towards. So we also, you know, we know that putting towards... A, uh, putting a ROSPA submission together is not a simple thing. It, it will take you a number of days and weeks, depending on the amount of time that you're you're putting into this and depending on the level of reward that you're going for as well. So uh, very much you can you can log in, you can you can make small changes, you can make big changes and you can save. And you can do that right up until the entry submission deadline, which, as we said, for cycle one is January 22nd and for cycle two is June the 18th. So um, it's designed to be flexible, designed to work alongside you in that way. So I'm going to close things there. Um, I think there are a few of the questions which we'll come back to you uh, uh, one on one. If we've not covered, we'll make sure that we've not missed anybody out. Uh, but 
as I say, really, we're just really excited to be presenting this new system to you uh, this year. And we really hope that it has some good usability benefits as we go forward. Um, I'd encourage you to uh, check out the other webinars that we've got coming up next as well. Um, we've got the next webinar on November 6, which is looking at how to enter the awards with a guide for first time entrants. Uh, and then also on the 20th of November, we've got how to submit awarding award winning entry. And that's got um, some tips and advice from our judging panel who are also participating in that session as well. So that would be a great opportunity for you to ask some questions for you know, the people who are making the big decisions on, on your entry and, and assessing those sector categories. And in fact, this or George, Sir George L category as well. So thank you so much for sticking with us today um, through to the end. Um, I wish you, you know, a safe rest of your day um, and a reminder really that the registration is open and live at rosper.com forward slash awards and we look forward to you joining us again this year. Take care.